All right, let's argue that this function is not one-to-one. -one. In order to argue that, I have to demonstrate two non-equal elements of the domain that go to the same element of the codomain by the function. So let me just observe that these two different elements, 0, 1, and 1, 0, in the domain, z cross z, both get sent to the same output. So first we observe that 0, 1 is not equal to 1, 0. Order pairs are not equal unless their, each of their components are equal. And yet when I plug in 0, 1 to the function, I get 4. And when I plug in 1, 0 to the function, I get 4. So this is a demonstration that this function is not 1 to 1. Uh, this function also ends up being not onto in order to demonstrate that, I have to provide an example of the uh, codomain, in this case, case is um, the set of rational numbers, that is not hit by some element of the domain by the function. So I've got many options here. It turns out that um, the number 3 is not hit by this function. It's not in the range. So I'm going to suppose by way of contradiction that there were actually was an element of the domain that did get mapped to the number 3 by the function. So I'm assuming that there is an element n comma m such that f of nm is equal to 3. Then I can just play around with this equation and see what I can conclude. I'm hoping for a contradiction. Well, first off, suppose that n plus m, which is an integer, is greater than or equal to 0. Then on the left-hand side, I'm looking at 4 to an integer power, uh, well, positive integer power. So it's either 4 to the 0, which is 1, or it's 4 to some um, integer greater than 1, which means the left-hand side is fully factored into factors of 2. I wrote 4 there, but I'm, I'll fix that in a second. It's just a bunch of, you know, 2 to um, factors of 2. Uh, on the right-hand side, you have the number 3, 3 to the power 1. So by the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, this can't happen. You can't have a power of 4 equaling to a power of 3. Um, uh, in the case that the um, n plus m value is negative, a negative integer, then I'm just going to um, rearrange the equation slightly and get, you know, a similar type of contradiction. So in the case that n plus m is a negative number, which is totally possible given, you know, different integers n and m, then I'm just going to observe that minus n minus m is a positive number, a positive integer, in fact. And so if I look at the equation um, manipulating the original equation to 1 equals 3 times 4 to this positive number, then I'm looking at the right-hand side um, is a demonstration that the number 1 is divisible by 3. But of course we know that to be a false statement, so I've reached a contradiction in this case as well. So I've demonstrated that the number 3 could not possibly be an output of this function, otherwise I get a contradiction, so I can conclude that n is not one to one, or not on to, pardon me. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, continue with uh, proving things here. I, I wanna prove that if I have a one to one function, then this equality holds. This is a set equality, so I'm gonna do the argument in um, two directions. First, I'm gonna argue that the thing on the left is a subset of the thing on the right. I'm gonna do that by letting x be an element of the thing on the left and by invoking the definition of preimage. Saying that x is in f inverse of something means that there is some y in f of a that f of x is equal to. So we have f of x is equal to y. But now look, noticing that y is in f of a, that has meaning. For y to be in f of a, that means there's some elements of a that gets mapped to y. But be careful, I can't reuse the letter x. It's already being used for something else. So I'm going to call that element z. So y being in f of a means there's a z such that f of z equals y. From this, I can conclude that fx equals fz. Since f is 1 to 1, we have that x equals z. But I've stated earlier that z is in a, so that's the same thing as x is being in a. So I've completed this direction of the argument. I started with an x in the left hand side and I concluded that x was in the right hand side I just need to do the other direction of set equality and now I'm finally realizing that I need to label those parts of my proof appropriately okay so for the second half I'm gonna let x be in the right hand side let it be an a and just by definition of f of a, since x is in a, that means that f of x will be in f of a. And again, by definition, if you have something that is in f of a, then that means, carefully, by the definition of preimage, that the element x must be in f inverse of that set f of a. So this is just, again, invoking the definitions of image and preimage very carefully in sequence. Um, and 
you can fill in the proof of, of number two. I've got it written there in the notes, but it goes much the same way. Um, the, the property of one to one is, use, is used in only one of the directions of subset. Okay, so, so let's demonstrate that these two statements are not like true in general. So let's take our favorite non to one function, f of x equals x squared, and try and demonstrate that there's a set A in the domain that doesn't satisfy the first um, condition. So let's make our set A be the interval from 0, 1. You can see pretty easily that the um, f of A, the image of that set A, is going to also be the interval from 0 to 1. And yet when you look at the pre-image of that blue interval 0 to 1, you're going to get a bigger um, pre-image. So f inverse of f of A here is going to extend all the way from negative 1 to 1. So writing this out in more detail, if A is 0 to 1 in the domain, then f of A, the image of that set, is going to be all the numbers in the codomain from 0 to 1, all the squares of the numbers in A. But if you look at the um, pre-image of 0, 1, anything that is in between negative 1 and 1 gets mapped into 0, 1. So the f inverse of f of a ends up being all of the numbers between negative 1 and 1, which is a bigger set than the original set a. So the fact that um, f was not 1 to 1 allowed us to find um, a subset of the domain a such that f inverse of f of a was not equal to a. And it's the same thing with the second property. Um, I can find two subsets of the domain, a1 and a2, that um, on one hand, uh, f of their intersection is something, and f of the first one intersects f of the second one is not that same thing. So I'm just choosing a1 and a2 to be disjoint so that their intersection is empty and hemp Hence, the image of their intersection is also empty. If you write it out, you see that. Um, but if you um, sort of take the image of these two sets separately, so f of a1 is the interval from 1 to 4, and f of a2 happens to be the same thing all the way from 1 to 4, so the intersection of their individual images happens to be the interval from 1 to 4, not the empty set. So again, with this non-one-to-one -one function, I have, I have found... Um, you know, some sets A1 and A2 that violate the property that was proven for one-to-one -one functions in number two.